let's worship him. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My life is yours. My life. Glory to God. Glory to God. We want to welcome you to Celebration Christian Fellowship where we celebrate Christ's life and one another. My God. Yes, Lord. Listen, we said yes when we got up this morning. We said yes when we got dressed to say, you know what, God, I'm coming into your house to give you a praise. I'm coming into your house to give you what you deserve. I'm coming because, God, I need not only do I need a word, but there's a burden on me to come and worship you. Is there anybody that got up with a burden to worship God on this morning? I know that you may need some things. I know I like many of us. I need a word. You may need a word, but I came with a burden to worship God. I came because I got a hallelujah in my lips and I came because there's a reason and I got a right to praise him. He, he's been too good and he's been too kind to me. So it's just incumbent upon me to praise our God. Would y'all just stand on your feet as we go before the throne of grace as we just command a blessing over this house and command a blessing over your house whether you're in the house or on on live or watching by replay if you would just come on let's get our minds and heart together to go before the throne of grace to just command a blessing so father right now we thank you god we thank you, God, for who you are. Father, we thank you right now for all that you've done. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for being El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for being Jehovah Jireh, for meeting every need that is in the house. Father, we thank you right now for being our protector. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for causing us to lie down, Father, in green places. So we pray right now, Father, that you have your way in this place. Uh, for every person that's singing anoint their voices on tonight for the preacher on the out for the of the hour father anoint her afresh and anew father sweep through this place god sweep through this place oh god and sweep while you're sweeping god sweep the hearts of your people sweep the minds of your people oh god cause our ways to be more like your ways god cause our thoughts god to be more like your thoughts father we're asking right now that you touch us god like you've never touched us before have your way in this place holy ghost have your way father we decree and declare that because father we belong to you father because we are yours we say that we are blessed and everything that is connected to us is blessed in the matchless name of jesus we do pray let every believer say amen amen and amen come on put those blessed hands together how many of you are just ready to worship god on today i told you i woke up with my mind made up with my heart fixed and my mind made up that i got a burden to worship him i got up with the mind to chase him on today i want you guys to just if you would just worship with us just a little bit little bit little bit as we go before the throne of grace we're gonna chase after god on today come on how many of you are willing and excited to do that on today Come on, a little more volume. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Come on, let's chase after God on today. Chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, because I need you more and more. Chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more. Chasing after I'm you, chasing after you, no matter what, no matter what I have to do, cause I need, cause you. I need you, I need you more and more. Chasing after I'm you, chasing after you, no matter what. I need you more and more. Come on, see more and more. More and more. More and more. More and more. Lord, I need you more and more. Cause I need, Cause I need you. you. I need you more and more. Chasing after I'm you. I'm chasing after you. No matter what. No matter what I have to do. Cause I need, Cause you. I need you. I need you more, more and more. Sing my own. sing more and more. More and more. More and more. More. More and more, more and more. Lord, 
I'm going to do it, y'all. I'm praising my way through just to be closer to you. Anybody praising them on today? I'm chasing after you. Come on, chasing. I'm chasing after you. I'm praising my way I'm praising through. my way through. Just to be. Just to be closer to you. I'm chasing after I'm you. I'm chasing after you. Come on, chase it. I'm chasing after you. I'm praising them. How you gonna do that thing? I'm praising. Anybody gonna praise my through their problem? Just to be closer. Just to be closer to you. I'm chasing after I'm you. Chasing after Come on, break you. it down. I'm chasing after you. Hey, praising my way through. I'm praising my way through. That's it, Chris. Just to be closer to be closer to you. I'm chasing after you. I'm chasing after you. Come on, more and more. I'm chasing after you. I'm praising my way through. I'm praising my way through. Just to be closer. You gotta know how to praise your way through your problems. I'm chasing after you. Come on. I'm chasing after you. You going after them hard on this morning. I'm yeah, yeah. We going after them hard on this morning. Come on. I want to be closer to you, God. When I want to be closer, that means I gotta pursue. I gotta pursue. I gotta pursue. I'm chasing. Come on. Come on. More and more. 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 Come on, bless the Lord in this place if you're chasing after him. Come on, if you're chasing him. Welcome you to Celebration Christian Fellowship where we celebrate Christ, life, and one another. Listen, I want to tell you guys that I know that you've watched the news and you've saw that the cruise industry is opened up. I think Carnival is going out in July, July the 2nd. So uh, uh, the, the cruise is definitely on. Uh, uh, Minister Kevin, I believe, checked the website. It looked, did, it, did it look as if ours was, is it at 100%? We knew it was close, but... Um, for those that still may want to attend the church annual cruise, I would suggest that you keep calling, get on the waiting list, um, and they'll let you know, as I believe many people are going to cancel that cruise and book early and go and take cruises and then just, you know, and find another cruise to go on to. So I would stay vigilant if you still wanted to go on our annual CCF sales cruise. When I tell you, I don't know about y'all, but I need it. I need to get my feet on some foreign soil amen i need to get it on some foreign soil around some you know i know we stay in a tropical place a beautiful place where it's always sunshine but it's just something about being over in the islands in the caribbean islands and enjoying that so we want to encourage everyone that want to go that want to be a part also um uh next sunday we will have the information for the 2022 uh sales ccf sales crews i know many people have been saying you know what we didn't get a chance to get in on this one wasn't sure how things would go post pandemic but now that we are have better vision concerning that the 2022 crews will get that information out as well so listen get your hearts and minds prepared also next sunday it's father's day weekend right amen it's father's day weekend but it's also our sixth pastor and church anniversary we turn six years old and then though even though year five was a little different because we were here by ourselves i believe it was just about three or four of us because we're in the midst of this pandemic and we realized that that ministry was shifting and changing but it didn't change what god was doing and as we even go into year six you know it seems like we're just really uh everybody's not ready to get out and become everything they was pre 
pandemic, but one thing I know is that God is still moving us. He's still prospering us. And I'm excited about what God is doing here. And I'm excited about your futures as well as you are connected to this blessing. But it's offering time. I want you to get your hearts and minds ready to give on today. Get your hearts and minds ready to give. There's three ways you can give here at Celebration Christian Fellowship via the cash app. It's dollar sign CCF. J-A-X, also you. He promised to never leave us or forsake us, no matter what it looked like. In spite of me, he's coming to my rescue. Hallelujah. We glorify you, God. Falling on my knees in worship, giving all I am to seek your face. God, all I am is yours. My whole life I place in your hands. God of mercy, humbled, I bow down in your presence at your throne. For I called, you answered, and you came to my rescue and I want to be where you are. I want to be with you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I called you, God, and you answered. Because where you are, God, there's liberty. My whole life I place in your hands, giving all I have to seek your face at your presence at your throne for I call and you answer and you came to my rescue and I Wanna be where you are. I call and you answer, and you came to my rescue, and I wanna be where you are. I want you to get the glory, God. You get the glory out of my life, Father God. Everything that I am belongs to you. I'm nothing without you, God. Keep me humble, Father God, before your throne. Get the glory out of my life, Father. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. And my life be lifted in my world, God be lifted in my love, Lord be lifted, lifted high, higher in my life, oh Lord be lifted in my world, I need you to be High, higher, higher, my life, 
your glory, God. I need more love, Father. Be lifted. Oh, be lifted. Lifted high. For I called you answered. And you came to my rescue when I want to be where you are I just want to be where you are God because where you are there's liberty God where you are the captive are set free Father God where you are whatever is missing in me Father God you make it correct Father God I just want to be where you are I just need to be where you are Be lifted high Higher and higher My life God be lifted In my world Oh God be lifted In my love Oh be lifted high higher and higher in my life I need you God to be lifted in my world everything connected to me God be lifted in my love oh be lifted high higher and higher in my God be lifted in my world. Oh, be lifted in my love. God be lifted, lifted high, higher in my life. God be lifted in my world. his testimony on today that I called and he answered how many of you know that we serve a great God come on the word is about to come forth but I want you to get excited about the great God that we serve I want you to come on stand on your feet because the word is about to come forth and we serve the greatest God not only he's stronger but he's a healer he's mighty in battle he's mighty in power my God come on bless the name of the Lord Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cut up a little more volume. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know that he's an awesome God? He's a mighty God. And because of that, I just love him. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. He's 
He's awesome and power is our God. He's our God, yes. See, there's nobody like our God. Come on and worship him on today. If you really believe that there's nobody like our God, would you give him a big praise in this place? Hallelujah. Yes, God. Come on. Into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, he's our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, he's awesome in power, our God, he's our God. Yeah. Come on. Now you got to know that he's for us that there's not a devil in hell that can stand against us you must know this that if he is for you you need to be willing to stand and fight no matter the trouble or test that may come your way and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us then what can stand against and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with then what can stay? Come on, sing with me. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And yeah, bless his holy name. He is El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Sikhanu, Makadash. He makes ways out of no way. I want to tell you something that God is doing something so profound in this season that he is just a faithful God. I don't know what you came looking for this morning. I know that God is. And so even as we're in the new series, Get Over the Coat, I heard the Lord say this morning, bound but not burned. He said bound but not burned. So many of us are going through so many things that we think that God has forgotten about us. And isn't it amazing that even when we feel like we're lost, God said that I won't, I won't let you get too far that you'll get lost. His word says that where can you go to get out of his presence? You can't go nowhere. And I'm telling you, as I sat back and, you know, as it was my week to preach and I began to think about, you know, get over the coat and what that meant for me. And as I began to press into his presence, I realized that the word, the acronyms for coat as God began to give me is C is circumstances. He said, get over your circumstances. Some of you can't get past where you are because you keep talking about the circumstance that you're dealing with. God said the O is stop worrying about the obstacles. You don't have to worry about how God is going to maneuver that thing. It's going to get maneuvered. God is a strategist. I'm excited that he, he works well behind the scenes. I love that the woman of God said that, Lady LaRue said that God is our 1159. He works that thing out. When she gave me that, that stuck with me years upon years upon years because there are some times when I don't think that God is going to show up. I mean, like, there's some hell that I've gone through. And, you know, even as I see the young people out in the audience, your life ain't so jacked up that God won't maneuver for you. Then God said that the A is your assignment. Some of you are mad about the assignment that God has given you. Some of you are talking about, I didn't sign up to be a prophetess. I didn't sign up to be an evangelist. I did not sign up to be an intercessor. All I wanted to do was to live my life. If I can tell you how many times I've th thought about closing down the church. Y'all, I'm just, just going to be honest and transparent. There are times when I said to myself, if I had to save somebody, I'd rather save my family. I'm just going to be honest. You know, my husband said the self-preservation is that you take care of yourself. There was so much hell that was going on. All to do was to help my family and then the the t stand for a test there are going to be some tests that you go through but you got to get over that that's why the word says get over the coat get over the circumstances and the obstacles stop talking about the assignment and the test that you have to go through to have a life that god has called you to have 
I know you said, well, daughter, I didn't sign up for all of that. I tell you one thing for sure. I came by to tell you that if you hadn't signed up for that, you would sign up for that. Catch that in the Holy Ghost. Because there could be so many things that you could be doing. But God is saying, in this season, I have these things that I want you to do. So this week's, this month a series or whatever my husband until the Lord tells him to shift this get over the coat I'm going to be preaching about bound not burnt if you have your Bibles your tablets turn with me to Daniel 3 and 21 I will be reading about the Hebrew boys this morning uh, as you find that the Lord said to me he said the definition of bound is tied up and the definition of burnt means to be destroyed by heat and there are moments in life when there are bound up tied up give up feelings of moments in life when you are wondering if God has forgotten about you. But God said that in this season, you must get over the coat, which is the circumstances, the obstacles, the assignment, and the test. He wanted me to let you know that Matthew 18 and 18 says, Verily I say to you, whoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whosoever shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The issue is you ain't loose nothing with your mouth. My God. You ain't even had an opportunity. I tell my daughters all the time, please articulate what you need from me. Please open your mouth enough to enunciate what it is that you need from your mother. And that's like so many of us with God. We hadn't even opened up our mouths to articulate what it is that we need in this season. All we keep talking about are the circumstances and the obstacles and the assignment that you're on in the test. Because a faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. And if you're not going through nothing, I'm a little leery that you don't know God. Because let me tell you something, God's going to test your faith. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. As I look back over my life as a teenager, as I look back over my life when I was eight and nine, God had already called me to be a prophet. And as I think about all the stuff that he showed me over my life, y'all know my testimony. I was a little bit crazy, I think, and bold when I walked up to my husband in the eighth grade and told him, God said, you're going to be my my husband and he said this girl is cuckoo for cocoa puffs but I had enough boldness in my shanana to walk up with my fast self to tell a man who was in the ninth grade that he was going to be my husband but why don't we be, be bold in this season to tell God that you know what I'll do whatever you ask me to do no matter how old I am I say yes the woman of God said we still win is what she said as I went to the back she said we still win at this time you should have Daniel 3 and 21. I will be reading out the ERV version, I think it is. And Daniel 3 says that these, then these men were bound in their coats. Somebody say coats. Coats and hoses and their hats and their garments. And they were cast in the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king commanded was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew the men that took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three... Three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, Did not we cast, somebody say three men, bound in the midst of the fire? And they answered and said, King, true, O king. And he answered, Say, Lo, I see four men, somebody say four men. Four men walking in the midst of the fire, and they have, somebody scream, no hurt. No hurt. And the form of the fourth looks like the Son of God. Somebody scream, the Son of God. It looks like the Son of God, he said. And then Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth, come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, and the prince, governors, and the captains, and the king's counselors began to gather and saw these men upon whose bodies had no power, nor hair was burned. They were no burn, y'all. Nothing. Their coats changed, nor smell. Fire had passed them. Father, we thank you for the word, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that right now, O oh God, do what only you can do, and that is the impossible. God, decrease me even the more that they don't see, nor do they hear from me, that they only hear from you, Father. We thank you oh God in advance and it's in your son Jesus name we pray amen so here it is the three Hebrew boys are thrown into the fiery furnace and as 
as they are thrown into the fiery furnace, there was something that was so profound. Before they even got thrown into the fiery furnace, they did something that the most of us would not do. They had a choice to make. See, here it is that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up this idol and he had said to all of the land that you must bow down and worship. And here it is, the three boys said, you know what? Now I said, they said, you know what? We will not bow down to no other God. We serve the high Messiah. So in that moment, they had to make a choice. So here it is, God said to me to let you know that get over the coat. The very thing that the enemy thinks is holding you will be the very thing, the first point, get over the coat. The very thing that the enemy thinks is holding you will be the very thing that holds you no more. God says, what you are wearing and carrying will not keep you bound. Somebody needs to get over that. What you are wearing and what you are carrying will no longer keep you bound. That's the first thing you need to write down because I'm your teaching prophet as I come to teach, inform, and enlighten you on the word of the Lord. So the first thing I need you to write down on your phone or your tablet so you can go back later is that the Lord has said, get over the coat. The very thing the enemy thinks is holding you will be the very thing that will hold you no more. The Lord says, it's just that thing. Some of you are carrying and wearing stuff, shame, pain, agony. Some of you are disgusted when you see you. Some of you don't understand that it will be that very thing that will push you into your purpose. Here it is. The three Hebrew boys had to make a decision before they got thrown into the fiery furnace. Here it is that King Nebuchadnezzar decreed and declared that they had to bow down, but they took a stance because they said, you know what? I have to get over the coat. I got to get over the circumstances and the obstacles. I have to be okay with the assignment in the test because here it is God was testing them in that very moment to see if they would bow down some of you when the enemy comes and presents stuff to you you forget the shanana and the God that is inside of you and you bow down to that thing that you are carrying and wearing I don't care where life has you right now don't allow the enemy to trick you and to think that God has forgotten about you God is saying in his word in Daniel 3 and 21 and these men were bound in their coats their hoses in their hats and other garments that they were cast in the midst of the burning fiery furnace and 22 says and therefore because the king commanded was urgent in the furnace exceeding the hot flames those who slew the men took them up they were burnt those people who are around you who are watching who think that you're going to fall out because it didn't align up to what God said some of you right now are upset because life threw you some lemons and you got to try to figure out a way how to make lemonade. I think about when I was younger and so many things took place and happened. If I could go back and tell the 13 year old me, because here I am in my 40s, if I could go back, I love when I see on Facebook, they say if you can go back and tell the young you something, what would you say? I would say don't buy down, don't compromise, don't throw in the towel, don't give up, keep your character intact keep your integrity intact he's not worth it I will tell the young me stop crying about something that you have no business even worrying about I will tell the younger me that the older you gonna be a prophetess and the, uh, the older you who's gonna walk into your calling with boldness and uh, audacity and the, the older you gonna be able to lay hands and they gonna heal and the older you will speak a word and people's lives will be changed I would like to tell the 13 14 and oh my god the 16 year old me that did some stupid stuff to hold on to what God has given you I would like to tell the, the younger me that you know what you don't have to give in to be in, in the in crowd you don't have to compromise and all those things that I tell my daughter I tell my daughter the emotions that you're feeling right now have nothing to do with what God has for you that's what I would tell the younger me in this season if I could go back but because I can't go back let me tell some somebody younger who's watching live and watching my replay and those who are in the house that God is saying that the enemy thinks that that thing is holding you but that very thing will hold you no more this just what you are carrying don't allow that thing to bound you to wind you up I, I think about when I used to be who I thought I used to be and I didn't know that God is saying that fiery furnace you're gonna walk out better than you went in 
Some of you need to understand Psalms 119 and 45 says, so I will live in freedom because I do my best to know your instructions. Isn't it wonderful that we need to listen to the instructions of God? Here it is that the three Hebrew boys had enough sense to say, you know what? I won't bow down to that thing because I know the God that I serve. I won't bow down and minister Janice. I won't allow the enemy to take me out by making me think that what what I see is what God said. Some of you need to begin to prophesy over your own life and say that what I see is not what God has said. And, and if he said it, then it has to come forth. And, and no matter what enemy declares in decree, he shall not win. Here it is that the king was making declarations and said that you had to bow down. But isn't it wonderful that the three Hebrew boys said, I'd rather die before I bow down to that thing. And so some of you would take the stand and say, you know what? I'd rather die in Christ than to compromise who I am for the enemy. I'd rather believe what God has said concerning my life. I don't care how long it takes. God is going to come through for you. Who needs to hear that this morning? That it doesn't matter how long it takes for God to do that thing. He's going to show up for you. If he said it, stay in the posture. The three Hebrew boys stayed in posture and they said, you know what? We will go into a fiery furnace before we bow down to anything other than God. The second thing, get over the coat is this month series. You, you can't be afraid of a stance. Even when everyone else is going the opposite direction, there will be times that you have to focus on what matters the most. What matters the most in your life? my God, what matters the most to you? When I think about my life, my family matters the most and my relationship with God, it matters the most before my family because when I'm in tech with God, my family, all that stuff aligns up with perfect will and his peace. Uh, I love to think about when I was out in the world and I lived with the devil's trinkets and things and I had no peace, but when I gave my life over to God, he is the prince of peace and there's something about the peace that I find with him. There's something about the peace when the three Hebrew boys went into the fiery furnace. They did not compromise. They, they went in, even though they threw them in. Wasn't it something that they say that I'd rather go in trusting God? And God showed up for them. I don't know who needs to hear this today, but don't give up your stance. Keep going in this season. No matter what your circumstances is, let your character be essential today. I love that my husband preached once upon a time he said that your character has to align up with the anointing over your life so many of us have anointing but have no character and because we have no character we can't draw nobody because we don't have no character people see us as cuckoo for cocoa pubs and see us as crazy because they can't get over what we've been through but God is saying when your character aligns up to my word they have to see somebody say they have to see they have to see what God is doing in this season I love that all of my college friends from fam you call me prophetess Lasha and all those who knew me as Lala because Lala was a mess Lala would help you slit some tires and Lala would do ride bys and drive bys with you but prophetess Lasha when you call her all she got is a prayer for you all all she can do for you is to go before the throne for you. All she can do is when you call me and tell me you're sick, it's begin to call out your name. When you tell me you have surgery at 9 o'clock, I'm there from 8.30 to 9 o'clock going before the throne of grace and mercy saying, God, let the physician have clean hands and a pure heart. Let him graduate summa cum laude from his class, oh God. When you tell me that your marriage is raggedy and God told you that that thing was going to work out, I say, God, clean up the marriage marriage oh God allow the husband to know that he's the head and not the tail the lender and not the borrower when your kids acting crazy I say God bring the prodigal sons and the daughters home God bring them through the door every Sunday minister Janice and I are looking at that door waiting for those who God has promised us that's gonna walk in and I know some say it seems crazy that you look at a door daily Sunday after Sunday Tuesday Wednesday I believe God's report and God said that my son is going to walk through that door so I'm believing that my own prodigal son is going to come home so 
if I'm believing for my child to come home, why can't I believe for your child? See, that's why when two or more, we got to get together. The three Hebrew boys, the one thing that they had together was great character. My question is, who are you riding with? So many of us say we got ride or dies, but our ride or dies don't know a scripture. I don't want to ride or die with somebody don't know more word than me. I need to hang with somebody that know more word than me. They got a prayer closet, a, a real, a real, real prayer life. I need somebody that's using oil other than for cooking. I, I need somebody that can walk the flow other than for twerking. I need, I need somebody to be able to call things in the atmosphere. You say, well, I don't know. I need somebody that when I get a little bit weak, they say, Lord God, help pass the prophetess Lashaw unbelief. I need those kind of people in my circle. And see, before they became the three, there was four of them. There was Daniel. And then there was a three. And let me tell you something. Even as Daniel was in the lion, then God showed up for him. Even as the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace, God showed up for them. It's something about when the character of the people that you're hanging around aligns up to what God is saying in the season. Daniel 3 and 17 says it, it, it. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. And 18 says, but if not, somebody scream, if not. They had an if not in their spirit, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They had a, but if it don't work, I still serve the Lord. Some of you don't have a, if it don't show up when I want it to show up I'm still not going to bow down to that thing I'm telling you I want to talk to the, the men and the women who are single in the in this congregation and those who are watching live and by replay don't you settle for what less than what God said don't you settle because of loneliness don't you compromise and fall in into temptation because you think that God has not showed up for you God will show up for you if he promised you that you better wait and trust God trust him I mean like trust him I don't care how long you have to trust him then wait I don't care how long you have to wait I was in my 30s before I got married I was in my 30s when I first had children I get tired of so many women talking about you don't know my my clock is ticking what clock is ticking I see clocks on walls that are ticking but not life clocks because God gave babies to women who was 99 and 100 if God can do that for them I know that God can give babies to women who are 50 and 60 I watched a girl who got engaged at 50 so I know that if God can give her a husband who found her at 50 let me tell you something I don't care how old it is I watched one of my spiritual daughters get married in an older age because God had promised her don't you give up on what he said because it's the season that your words have to be God I'll wait God I'll wait their words but if not let it be known, O oh, the king, I will not serve no worship. Some of you begin to give in because you believe what the enemy is saying in this season. I don't care. Everybody's talking about COVID times and, and times are different and, and, and we're in times of our hardness. But and when I read my Bible, there was famines in the land way before this came along. And there was diseases and things that were wiping out and cleansing and things of that nature. There, I love the saying, there's nothing new under the son God has did it before he'll do it again all you need to know today is don't give up don't get get over the coat you gotta take a stance and my stance and posture today is I stand with God you got to stand with God. I'm telling you, I felt that in my spirit this morning, Minister Kim. I felt that I, I told God, I said, God, what is it that you want me? He, keep t he keeps telling me and I keep trying to bypass it, but I'm going to go ahead and go there because so many times, God, I was in, in my restroom. And I was, you know, I was in, I call that my mini prayer closet because God talks to me real good when I get in the shower. It's like he talked louder when I get in the shower. I'm like, God, I was in a prayer closet. He said, no, you in a prayer closet doing all kinds of other things. I'm looking for for books that I want to read. You know, you get in your prayer closet. If it has other things inside of it, you find yourself praying for a while. You find yourself.
myself. Look, I'm looking in my, my theme. I hadn't put up my, my books yet. And so I'm in there looking in crates for books. And you lay down and you lay prostrate for a while. And then here come the dog. And then you're playing with the dog for a little while. And then one of your children come in and they ask you questions. You get distracted. But there's something about when God gets that uninvited attention, when he just gets the one-on-one -on -one with you. And he begins to tell you what it is that he really wants you to know. And, and God said, he said, daughter, it's about the divine connection in this season. I wanted to bypass it because I said, God, how does that work together? And I was telling my husband, I said, God wants me to let the people know it's about who you are connected with. It, it's about those people. And he kept telling me about how Daniel and the three Hebrew boys was together way before they separated. And even though they still were living in the same place, they had their own thing that they went through, but it was about the divine connection between all of them that they never bowed down to anything other than God. And God said that there has to be a divine connection between you and your friends that they won't compromise in the season that no matter what happens, they believe God and they stand with you and they pray with you and they trust God with you. And even when you get weak, they don't give up on what God is saying. That's why you can't tell everyone everybody your visions and your dreams of, of what God has told you because some people will begin to pray against you but I'm believing that the three Hebrew boys and Daniel who were divinely connected with their their the nine divinely connected through God's grace and mercy that they stood together and they never gave up on what God is saying and God said tell the people to find you three and no more some of you got too many people I'm telling you you got too many people and the more people you get the more confusion it is. And, and so God, he had an inner circle. Yeah, there was 12, but there was the ones, the three that he walked with. And some of you, y'all understand that there is something about the three that was in the fiery furnace and him showing up. And it's about the three that he had. And, and some of you want to get up with the numbers. You got 25 people wanting to be your friend and none of them really got your back. And God said today, you got to understand that you got to take a stand. You got to make sure that those who you call your friend are following God. First Corinthians 11 and 1 says, follow my examples just as I follow the example of Christ. You need to have people that will follow the example of God. And no matter how weary I get, they, they don't look at titles and what God calls me. But they say, you know what, you wrong when you wrong and you you right when you right. I need somebody who don't care about my title, but care about my soul. I need somebody that don't don't see me as a prophetess, but respect me with the title, but see me when I go wrong and have enough boldness to say that's not right when you do that. I need somebody in my corner to tell me the truth. I don't need a bunch of yes and amen. I don't need a bunch of people that laughing and giggling when I do some stupid stuff. I need somebody to tell me that that was just stupid. And I, I need somebody to tell me you ain't living right. And I, I need somebody to tell me that God has a plan for you according to his word in Jeremiah 29. 11. I don't want people just to be here because they want to be here. I need people that want to be here because they know who God is and they know what God is saying concerning me. It's the season that the three Hebrew boys, they understood one thing for sure that Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego said we won't serve no other God but God and they understood one thing for sure because it's three of us, one for the Father, one for the Son and one for the Holy Ghost. Some of you so busy worried about all that other stuff and God is saying I got you but who's connected to the I got because somebody is a spiritual leech that just want your anointing and they just want what you have and laughing and kicking and talking about you behind your back but when you get somebody that really cares about your soul being saved and your soul being anchored they won't come on now they won't go crazy when God is telling you he about to bless you in this season God is in a blessing business. I'm telling you, God is in a blessing business. I'm, I'm not talking about cars. He blessing cars and, and houses and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm talking about the blessings of the favor of God. I'm telling y'all, I tell people all the time, cars is nice. But the thing that I want is for my children, I want God's 
favor for them. I mean, I want the favor of the Lord on my daughters and my son, that the favor that will open up doors for them. I want when they get older, that their scholarships are paid in full when they go to school. I want it. I'm just going to be honest, y'all. I want my daughters, to, their husbands to find them real early because he who finds a wife find a good thing and obtain favor. I mean, I want my daughters not to go through the hell that I went through because I couldn't wait on my husband to find me and dude after dude and relationship after relationship. I want my daughters to be found by the men of God early that they have a great life and just a favor in businesses, whatever they want, but more, more than I want anything, I want them to never have to want for nothing. I want that when they open their mouths, God answer. That's what I want for my daughter. See, I love houses and cars, but when God is doing something, I say, God, favor my children, oh God. Favor my children, oh God. Favor. That's all I want, y'all. And I tell God, thank you for the favor that is given my husband and I, but we're not going to be here always. And there's going to be some times when our daughters and my son have to know that God's got them. And that's why you got to teach your children who God is. So even when hell hits your home, they understand that God still has y'all. My God, my God. The third thing God said, the third and final thing that God said is they get over the coat bound, but not burnt. He said, don't worry about the fire. God is with you. Somebody scream. God is with me. God is with me. God is not forsaking you. God said that he is a provider. He is making provisions for you. Whatever you need in this season, open your mouth. I couldn't believe that God, I'm telling y'all, I couldn't believe that, that when God said that God's people are not opening up their mouths asking God for nothing. I was like, God, I, I know you probably get tired of me because I'm asking God for everything. When I see an open heaven open up for other people, when I'm at ministry, when I'm at churches and whether it's my church or I go somewhere and I see the angels angels flying around and I see the open heaven I begin to just call off stuff because I know that when God shows up for somebody else he has to be on my block y'all and that's why God is saying get over the coat bound but not burned don't worry about the fire God is with you God has not forsaken you what he said he is providing provision for you whatever you need it's now the time is now God said I will exalt you because you are not alone what is it in this season that you need Daniel 3 and 25 and he answered lo I see four men loose walking in the midst and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of God God said today I am with you you're not going through that stuff alone all you got to do is begin to worship me all you got to do is to begin to thank me for what you have believed me believing God for I am believing God for the ridiculous and those who get on the prayer line with me in the morning time shameless plug at 6 a.m. Monday through Friday, Eastern Standard Time. Know that I ask God to do the ridiculous for me. Know that I say, God, do something so crazy. Isn't it crazy that the three Hebrew boys were in a fiery furnace and God shows up and in front of the same man who threw they threw them in there. King Nebuchadnezzar said, isn't that the four? Isn't that a fourth man? I thought we threw three in. See, the enemy think that you're going to die there, but what he's going to have to see is God show up there. My God, the enemy think that the, that the devil, the devil is thinking he's going through the land seeking who he may devour and your name got called in. Don't get upset or get worried because God gave permission or he allowed for you to go through whatever it is that you're going through because his word says that I would never leave nor forsake you and just like he did for the three Hebrew boys he showed up in the fiery furnace for them King Nebuchadnezzar said I thought we threw three men inside and lo I see a fourth man and he looks like the son of God let me tell you something don't you take your eyes off of God don't be like Peter and walk on water and take your eyes off of him and begin to sink but isn't God good that even when Peter began to sink God reached his hand out and lift him up God will lift you up in this season I don't care how much mud you get thrown on your face be willing to look silly for God allow others to say that it looks crazy that you got a wedding dress it looks crazy that you said your stomach gonna get flat and it got bigger it looks crazy that you said your husband coming home and yet he ain't there it looks crazy when the doctors have told you your health is going down and you believe in God for great health it looks crazy when your vision is going crazy and you got brand new glasses that you barely can see out of 
but God is saying, I'm going to give you good vision, but you got to do what God is saying in this season. I believe the report of the Lord. It looks like there's four. And the fourth one is the son of man. Let me tell you something. God is coming to take care of you. The son of God is coming through to take care of you. The son of God is there. The fourth one is like the son of God. He is coming to take care of you. And I don't know what you need God to do in this season. All you need to do is say, God, have thine own way today. Come on in, God. Change the way I'm living, oh God. Change my mind, oh God. Change how I feel in this season, oh God. God, I may be bound, but I'm not burnt, oh God. And they said that the three walked out with their coat still on. It's not smelling like smoke. Isn't it wonderful that you're going through whatever you're going through, but you're going to walk out not smelling like where you've been, my God. You're going to walk out looking better than what you went in. Yeah, they may laugh at you. They may talk about you. They may know all your business, but let me tell you something. It looks like the Son of God is with you, and all you need to do is turn around and say, God, thank you for being with me. Somebody need to get a good rock going on this morning because you don't even know what to say. Hell's been hitting your home, and you don't even know how to open up your mouth, and all you need to do is say, mm. God going to show up for you because there's something about the mm. God is answering in the um. Let me tell you something. Don't you worry about what it looks like, my God. Don't you worry about what it looks like in this season. It says the form of the fourth one is like the son of God. God is saying, let me tell you something. Say it looks like, I don't know about you, but I'm about to shout myself. Said the fourth one looks like the son of God. I've been through some stuff where I needed the son of God to show up in my season. I've been through some stuff that people looked at me. I remember when we lost our son, Jacoby, and I've been raising everybody else's children. And only thing that asked God for was God when I was in the operating room when I went to the hospital and the doctor said it don't look like it's going to turn out good and I remember crying and praying and saying God I don't help raise everybody else's children and God I'm a school teacher and I fed everybody else's children and I clothed everybody else's children and not even to mention how many other hairdos I did before I had my own children and how many clothes I don't bought and I began to tell and negotiate with God but God said I need them more than you do so he went on and took my son home and everybody else was talking about me see it's the saints that talk about you it wasn't the people in the world it was the people who knew me the most the ones who should have been praying for me them the ones who said she lost her baby them the ones that say she must be shamed because she ain't coming back to church it's the same ones that could have drove by my house because they knew where I lived at and laid hands on my stomach and could have laid hands on my mind because my mind was going crazy and and I was a little bit depressed and about to throw in the towel and the doctors gave me pills and I was about to take my life but it wasn't the saints who, who came and laid hands it was the people in the world let me tell you something the ones who you don't think know God it's going to be them who going to come on and tell you that God's got you it's going to be them that say don't you throw in the towel it's going to be the ones that you don't think my God it was the ones that I did not think who was going to show up for me it was them that came and said, it's the, it's the season that you need to get up because you may be bound, but you're not burnt. It was those who told me to get over the coat. They said, get over the circumstances and the obstacles and the assignments and the tests. And, and I said, and I understood now because there was a season of loneliness that I went through after we lost our son. And, and it wasn't the, the ones who I thought was going to come and see about me. It was the ones that I did not think was going to come. They came and I so crazy that I couldn't even imagine and I wanted to call the ones who I thought was but God is saying in this season I'm going to change everything that you thought he said I'm going to change the whole trajectory of, of your friends and that's why God is saying this season that you're going to need you a great three you're going to need you the three to come and hang out with you you don't need a whole bunch of people you need you a Shadrach Meshach and Abednego you need somebody who say I'm not going to bow down you need somebody that say I ain't going to talk about you I'm going to pray you through you're going to need somebody that when God going to show up come on now the prayers of the righteous availeth much you need you somebody who's going to be righteous enough not to put your business is on front street who is that for today you need you somebody to understand because God is saying in this season get over the coat because you're not burnt nor bound you are free walk in freedom stand to your feet and give the Lord a hand clap of praise my God my God you know as the word of the Lord began to come forth I could just see where you know we're in this series it's a reason why God said get over 
the coat. We know that the coat in the in the life of Joseph, the coat in the the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it showed forth not only uh, how much maybe providence or money that they had, but it showed the favor of God. Coats, sometimes our clothes will make us look like we got something, especially us. We'll spend all our money on clothes because we love looking good, right? We want this outside to look good. That's just the truth. That's okay. God created us like that, especially sisters, right? Y'all are women. Y'all are the, y'all, beauty is just who you are. And so when you take a serious look at trying to look well, it's important. But you can't get caught up on that. Because sometimes you ain't going to look your best. Sometimes you can't get to the hairdresser. Sometimes you can't get your nails did and your hair done. But you can always clean that spirit man up. You can always make time to pray. You can always make time to get in the presence of God. You can always, and and getting over the coat, what was so delivering about that message was that, you know what, it doesn't matter what you do to me because at the end of the day, nothing you can do can be done without the permission of God. So when I understand that, now listen, I belong to God. You belong to God. You are God's children. So when something happens to you, God said that it was okay. Now, it don't mean that it's, it feels good. It don't mean that I, I have an understanding of why. It don't even mean that I agree with it. It simply means that God said it was okay. So now what's my responsibility? Because I'm not God. And God said it was okay. My responsibility then is to move forward.